Now that we have our cover, we need to put the text within that cover. If we do it like we did before, we go over to the toolbox, click and hold down on the text tool, select horizontal type tool, and then click in the middle of this box. We get our text insertion point, and we know that the text is going to go right there. So let me type this in. Uh oh, what's happening here? The text doesn't know that we want it to be within the boundaries of that rectangle. So if we remember before, we could go in and we could click inside the text, we could hit return and manually space each line out. But what a pain. There's got to be a better way. And there is. I'm going to go up here to the status bar and next to the commit button is the cancel button. I'm going to hit cancel and that cancels all the text that I've added so far. So now we're going to do something a little bit differently. Still using the horizontal type tool, instead of just clicking, I'm going to use my cursor and I'm going to draw a box. See what happened there? Instead of just the blinking text insertion point, we now actually have a bounding box. We've got these dashed lines with the little squares in the corners, which are called handles. This dashed bounding box indicates the boundaries of our text. So this time as I type, notice how the text wraps automatically here? That's because we drew the box ahead of time. If we don't like the size of our box, we can go out to these little squares along the edge of the bounding box, which are called handles. And remember before when I told you to watch the shape of those cursors? Watch what happens when I mouse over a handle. The cursor changes to some arrows. As soon as you see those arrows, you can click and hold down and drag that edge. Whoops. It's a little fussy. Got to make sure you're in exactly the right place. And then drag. Let me just click in there to deselect that text. I find these bounding boxes very useful. And in fact, I hardly ever create a text layer just by clicking anymore. I almost always drag a box. If nothing else, it makes it so that your text doesn't run off the edges of the image. Before I started recording, I actually went in and copied this text from a word processor. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here, and I'm going to show you a cool trick along the way. If you double click on a word, it highlights. If you triple click, one, two, three, it selects an entire line. If you quadruple click, one, two, three, four, it selects the whole paragraph. Once it's selected, I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut, command V, to paste in the actual text. Okay, now that I've got my text in there, I can go up to the status bar and commit my change. Notice over in the layers palette, this text layer that was created with a box looks just like the text layer we created before. So we did two major things here. First, we created a new painting layer, then selected a portion of it and filled it with white to act as a cover to obscure our original image. Then we added text in a new way. Still using the horizontal type tool like we had before, instead of just clicking, this time we dragged a bounding box, which enabled Photoshop to wrap the text automatically for us. Then we saw how we can resize that bounding box by dragging on the little squares, the handles, on the edges and corners of the bounding box. And of course, when you're finished editing text, don't forget to commit your changes and leave text editing mode. Next, we're going to take a look at moving these layers around, both individually and as a group.